did. Oh, Mom, you'll never believe it. Oh, I know I can't. <laughs> With her. All I know is that we won't believe it. Well, Jeff Powers and I are going to put out a local newspaper together. I don't believe it. See, I told you you wouldn't believe it. Well, that wasn't it. That was Billy Joe. But never mind. Uh, who and what is Jeff Powers? Who is Jeff Powers? Oh, Mom. Oh, I should know. Uh, movie star? Uh, president? King. Mom, Jeff Powers is the boy at college Bobby Joe's been dreaming about for weeks. Not just a boy in college. He's a graduate student in journalism. He's an intellectual. I knew one of them once. Nobody could understand him. Finally, one day, they figured out what he was saying and put him in jail. <laughs> Come on, Bobby Joe, and tell us. How did you finally land the all-time dream print? Well... It all became possible when our journalism professor said we could put out a local paper for a week instead of a term paper. That is, if we could find a local paper to put out. So that could narrow it down a little. <laughs> sure could. <laughs> well, what paper did you get? The Hooterville World Guardian. No kidding. Sam went for that? Well, uh, I'm sure he will. If you do the asking. <laughs> Well, Mommy never turned you down. Yes, but I never asked him to take over his business. Well, that's the most welcome news I've heard in months. You bet I'll let you kids put out the paper. You mean it? Well, sure, if you think you can handle it. Oh, we won't have any trouble. Jeff is so capable and intelligent and efficient and affectionate. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, frankly, being affectionate doesn't have too much to do with putting out a paper. It does when I'm helping. <laughs> so jittery after all he's just a fellow. Oh, Mom, he's not just a fellow. Oh, Uncle Joe, uh, you and Mr. Drucker uh, sort of sit over here uh, like you're playing chess. You know, frown a lot. We don't have any chess men. Oh, well, uh, think about world problems. <laughs> That's good. Oh, oh, Mom, uh, you sit over here uh, and... Smile like you're wonderful. <laughs> yeah, what do I do? Oh, um, uh, you can help Mom. Oh, and don't look too pretty. <laughs> that's right. Don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. <laughs> okay. Now, this is just our family in an average evening at home. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, uh, everybody hold your places. <laughs> Hi. Jeff, how nice of you to drop by. Well, this is the time you told me to come. Oh, of course. Uh, do come in. Thank you. <laughs> this is my mother. Hello. Mrs. Bradley. And my sister, Billy Joe. Hi. Hello, Joe. And my Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe? And Mr. Sam Drucker. Ooh, Mr. Drucker, how do you do? This is Mr. Magnificent. It's his brain. Inside, he's beautiful. Uh, Mr. Drucker, I've been waiting to meet you, sir. I just want to say you'll not regret letting us take over your paper, sir. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I've got 138 subscribers, and I wouldn't want to lose any of them. Don't worry. As Bobby Joe told you, our editorial policy. Uh, no. We're going to be fearless, tough, incorruptible. We're going to hit hard. Ah! And let the chips fall where they may. Right, sir? Oh, uh, sure, right. I say a newspaper is more than just the voice of its community. I say it's the conscience of its community. Oh, oh, oh yeah, oh, that conscience stuff, yes. Well, only last week I came out flat-footed against sticking gum under the seats at the bandstand. But, but what about slum clearance? 
Integration, uh, urban development, power politics, foreign aid. How about that? Uh, yeah, how about that? Uh, Bobby Joe, why don't you take your friend into the dining room and have some punch and talk over your plans? Oh, right. Uh, we'll go and have some punch and talk over our plans. Well, I can see we're going to have to roll up our sleeves. <laughs> What do you think, Sam? Yeah, Sam, what do you think? Well, I think I'd better stick pretty close to the store while they're putting out that paper. <laughs> Where is our irrigation dam, Mr. Cooper? What's all this? Two years ago, Mr. E.J. Cooper, the county supervisor, promised in his election campaign that an irrigation dam would be built in the Hooterville area. But as of this date, it hasn't even been started? Oh, I don't know about this. Oh, it's all true, Mr. Drucker. We looked up the copies in your old guardians. Yeah, well, I know it's true, but uh, this thing of naming names. That's our policy. Fearless, tough. Let the chips fall where they may. <laughs> That's terrific. Now you're talking. Joe, this fella Cooper's pretty powerful. If we get him short of us, he could cut off our water. He's already cut off our water. Don't have an irrigation dam. <laughs> you need fellas like Cooper. I don't like to irritate them. What do we need them for? Well, to get things done for us. Everything starts at the county seat. Well, so far, all the county seat has done is sit on its county seat. <laughs> Ain't right. The kids have got a good idea. Build a fire under this Cooper character. Well, I, I just don't know. What's the matter? Are you afraid of the truth, Sam? Veritas. Uberalis. <laughs> Melanie. Jeff's got some other great ideas, too, about the road that the county promised to us, and the control of the mosquitoes, and... and a million and one other good ideas. Well, you think it's all right to put this issue out? I'm all for it. Me, too. Pour it on, kids. We're behind you a thousand percent. Okay, kids, you go ahead and put it out, but I don't know where all this is going to lead to. I'll tell you where it's going to lead to. It's going to lead to the valley having some respect for the Hooterville World Guardian. Now the people may actually read the Guardian instead of just lying in their canary cages with it. Take them last few notes again. Sorry, I thought it was you. <laughs> Sam, wake up, Grandpa, will you? Grandpa! <laughs> Grandpa, will you stay awake? Oh, I, I love a piece of cake. <laughs> Thank never, Joe, will you stop talking to him? Cost me five bucks every rehearsal. <laughs> All right, now let's take it from the top again. One, two, three. Pretty bad fire? The barn was completely destroyed. Couldn't the fire department save any of it? The fire department didn't show up. It didn't show up? <laughs> Why? I don't know. That's no answer for a reporter. You're supposed to find out about these things. How? Inquire around. You, you, you dig. That's what a good reporter does. All right, man, that does it. And improve on perfection. I'm going to make a very good reporter. Hoppy Joe, you can be a wonderful reporter. You're intelligent, you're ambitious, and you have a beautiful yes. way of expressing yourself. <laughs> Come on, I want you to help me with this typesetting. 
And then I want you to go out and get all the details on that fire story. But I already gave you all the details. Newt Carly's barn burned down. But you left out the most important part. Why the fire department didn't show up. Now, this is vital to the valley. It could mean the future safety of the whole community. And as a good newspaper man, you've got to get the facts. You consider me as a newspaper man? <laughs> a newspaper woman. That's better. Come on, let's type set. How do you do that? <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, uh, first you take this. Then you take the type. And and then you you do this. Golly. Publishing a newspaper is exciting. <laughs> yeah. Come on, there's work to do. You try. It. I wonder if William Randolph first had this problem. Hi, Mom. Well, if it isn't our favorite five-star reporter. And how is the newspaper world? Not bad. Did you hear that Newt Kylie's barn burned down? No. When that happened? This afternoon. Mom, who's fire chief of the volunteer fire department? Your Uncle Joe. <laughs> but I thought they elected a new chief each year. Well, they're supposed to. But this year, they got into such a hassle over who was going to be chief that they knocked over the pot-bellied stove. And while they were putting out the blaze to save the firehouse, they forgot all about the election. Oh. <laughs> Mom, where is Uncle Joe now? <laughs> Do you think he'd mind if I wake him? Oh, no, he'd welcome it. Like the play. <laughs> oh, hi, Mom, you. Uncle Joe. I understand you're chief of the volunteer fire department. That's correct. Well, I'm here on behalf of the Hooterville Guardian. <laughs> That's C-A-R-S-O-N. You forgot capital C. She knows how to spell your name. <laughs> oh, I got a couple of pictures up in my room. There's an 8 by 12 and a 10 by 14. <laughs> Who are the other members of the fire department? Well, let's see. Uh, assistant Chief, Sam Drucker. Floyd Smoot, in charge of hoses. Ben Miller, in charge of axes. And Grandpa Miller. Grandpa Miller, what does he do? Somebody has to get the coffee and donuts. <laughs> Next question. Where was the fire department when Newt Kiley's barn burned down? Well, the fire department was... Newt Kiley's barn burned down? When did this happen? This afternoon. Now, let me ask a question. Why wasn't I, uh, me, the, the fire chief notified? That's what the Hooterville Guardian would like to know. There's been a foul up here someplace. Uncle Joe, is the procedure the same as ever when a fire breaks out in the valley? Exactly the same. Lem Stacy, he lives on the highest knoll in the valley, is notified. He sounds the alarm and the volunteer fire department answers the fire. And evidently today something went wrong. You darn tootin' something went wrong. <laughs> Lem Stacy didn't sound the fire alarm. Let's go over to Lem and get down to the bottom of this. And when you write this up, I want you to name names. The chief of the volunteer Hooterville Fire Department. I can't stand this incompetence. <laughs> this dereliction of duty is the... Uncle Joe. Huh? I think you can save yourself a trip. Here comes Lem Stacy down. All right, Joe. We were just coming over to your place, Lem. Where were you this afternoon? That's why I'm here. Where were you in the fire department? We were around. How come you didn't sound the alarm? I did sound the alarm. Then how come we didn't hear it? That's what I want to find out. <laughs> come on, Lem. Joe, I did sound the alarm. Sure you did. Well, what time did you sound the alarm, Lem? Got it right here on the report. Six minutes after three. Uncle Joe? What time did you call rehearsal for the volunteer fireman's band at San Drucker's? Three o'clock. In other words, you were making such a racket practicing that you didn't hear the alarm. Right? If you want to cross my name off, it won't make me mad. But one thing I can't stand, it's a publicity hound. <laughs> There's the lead story for today's issue. 
thanks to the death reporting of my ace reporter. Newt Kiley's barn was burned to the ground when the Hooterville Volunteer Fire Department failed to answer the alarm. Fire Chief Joe Carson admitted that... Jeff, you can't print this. What do you mean I can't print it? It isn't right. It isn't right? Well, that's exactly what happened. I mean, it isn't right to mention Uncle Joe's name. But he is the one you interviewed. And he is the fire chief. I know, but couldn't you call him Fire Chief What's-His-Name? <laughs> You're making him look bad. I'm sorry, but I'm just printing the news as it happened. Besides, I mentioned all the members of the fire department. Yeah. Poor fellas. I've got it. Couldn't you call them Fireman 1, Fireman 2, and so forth? <laughs> I mean, Joe, you just can't feel that way. In the newspaper business, you've got to be objective, tough, strong, fearless. <laughs> Jeff, you're really not going to print that story, are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to print it. Are you sure? Are you? Um, yes, I'm sure. In that case, you can find yourself another ace reporter. Bobby <laughs> Joe? Tough, strong, fearless. And when he prints the story, he insists on using Uncle Joe's name. Oh, that's awful. Isn't it, Steve? Well, I don't know. Steve! Well, she said the fire department was in the wrong. Well, sure, but... And Uncle Joe is the fire chief. But does Jeff have to be a tattletale until the whole world? Honey, the guy's just trying to put out a newspaper. Does he have to smear my uncle to do it? He's not smearing your uncle. He's simply relating the facts. Well, what have the facts got to do with it? What have the facts... Oh, boy, if that isn't just like a woman. You're shouting. Well, what of it? Well, I can shout just as loud as you can. And... What are you doing? Keep going. This will push the fire story right off the front page. What? Do you think it'll be a messy divorce? <laughs> you want to be about it. <laughs> Scoop killers. <laughs> oh, hi, Joe. Hi, Sam. What's going on in the back room? Well, I don't rightly know. I've been keeping out of it. Well, I what did you want to see us about, Joe? Well, I call this emergency meeting of the members of the fire department here. What you got so far, Grandpa? This isn't a rehearsal. Just say the word. <laughs> Friends, Happy. Will you have a chair? Oh. Have a pair? <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Pose again. Relax, Sam. The reason I called you members together. Here they are. Oh, you got them all finished yet? Finished. We can load them on the cannonball any time. Yeah, I call this meeting to get together. Hey, what's this? Kylie's barn burned. Fire department fails to arrive. Jeff, you can't print that. Why not? That's what happened, isn't it? Well, kind of. When you put it in the big black headlines, it makes it look a lot worse than it is. Fire Chief Joe Carson admitted that the fire department failed to arrive because he had called a rehearsal. You can't put this paper out. Why can't he? Because he uses my name in a derogatory manner. That's why. <laughs> well, Joe, when he put out that story about Cooper and the irrigation dam, you were the one that said, oh, go right ahead, name names. Let's get this thing out in the open. Well, didn't you? Yeah, that's different. How? Well, he's a stranger. And I'm a friend. <laughs> Hogwash. Hey, what do you know, Sam? He's even got your name in here as one of the members of the fire department that didn't show up at the fire. Oh, it is? Now, now wait a minute, Jeff. You can't do this. This isn't right. What is he trying to do to a guy anyway? Matter of fact, all the rest of you members' names here, too. <laughs> The 
came in handy. Have some candy? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> now, tell me, everybody, are the things that Jeff said in this article true? Well, I don't know. Well, okay, then, what are you grumbling about? Fire can be a very serious problem to us in this valley. And all Jeff did is point out the fact that we've been a little careless, a little, a little lax. Yeah, but Kate, all this business about us not hearing the alarm because we were making too much racket just isn't true. You're sure of that? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't get the bass drum once every four weeks. Listen. I said listen. Holy mackerel. Fire. A real next month. Congratulations. <laughs> nice going, editor. Likewise, Dad. <laughs> Where's the fire? Drucker store. <laughs> See, we were downwind of the gong and upwind of the fire. And Sam, you'd better write up this one. <laughs> Today, it's your rare chance to see big Hollywood legends explore the medium of television. Our stars this week are Kim Basinger, Julie Andrews, and Rock Hudson on Big Star's Little Screen. Our Saturday Cavalcade today, starting at 12 noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, only on TV Land. Now stay tuned for Green Acres as Hooterville sat here in TV Land. Helicopter Junction.